Hello. In this second look video, I'm going to talk about the MACD or MACD module. I'm on Bitcoin. Now let's load the MACD module. There we go. I'm going to start this discussion with one of the most asked questions I get. Where is the histogram? MACD is supposed to have a histogram. Well, it does. And it's right in plain sight. I will demonstrate. Okay. There we go. Let's load a very simple MACD. And we will demonstrate where the histogram is. Right here. That's right. The delta is your histogram. Let's move this up. Or you can now see it better. Let's clean this up a little bit and get it even more visible. Get rid of all the moving averages. There. Now, as you can see, the delta lines up near perfect with the histogram. Let's even make this a little thicker so it stands out. There we go. Here you are. The delta and then a MACD histogram. Perfectly lined up the way they should. I chose to go with this approach simply because I wanted it to be included in the algorithm. And I wanted the algorithm to be able to actually track it easily. Now, from the standpoint of visualization, you can visualize it as a histogram if you'd like. I personally don't like to with the Jackrabbit module because I want to see the actual entry and exit points expressed in a relationship appropriate to the moving averages. So, let's load this module back at its normal state where everything is default. Of course, always disable the signal line and display the chart. The normal MACD and this are identical in that approach. The differences are on the basis of how the information is visualized. Seeing it this way from the standpoint of the algorithm helps you make more informed decisions, in my opinion. When you see it in histogram state, it doesn't always convey a relationship to the fast and slow lines of the MACD directly. And as you can see, there are a few cases that are quite interesting in relation to the delta line and the moving averages themselves. Let 
Now let's actually take a look at some of the menu items available from MACD. Now I could load the analyzer, but from the standpoint of the algorithm itself, I want to just focus on that. Now we are going to actually look at the MACD settings. As I said in the introduction, most of the modulus framework is on the basis of a primary and a confirmation. There is a little bit of stuff at the top of it that is universal and specific to the modulus framework itself. Let's start with the identifier. Basically, this is anything you want to help you stay focused when you make your alerts. Use this appropriately and with a great deal of consideration to what you are trying to achieve. IOI source. Indicator on indicator source. That means you either want to pull in information from another module or you don't. You don't if this is the top of the chain because there is no other module to pull in. If you're using another module that you want to pull the signal line in from, then you will want this. And of course, the module will show up here with the signal line if you do want that. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into that detail because there are already existing videos within the YouTube and Patreon channels that explicitly talk about the indicator on indicator process. Confirmation or combine. This is in confirmation state. That means that each module connected to the other will confirm each position appropriately. This acts as a filtering, meaning buy and sell signals that don't align between the modules get filtered out. If you set it to combine, then the buy and sell signals are added together so that module A and module B will have a combined sell and buy signal account of both of them at the same time. There are reasons why you would and would not want either combination, and that depends upon your intended goal and strategy. Confirm is the most common approach as you want to filter signals. Combine is an accumulation approach where you want to add signals. Signals generated. You can generate buy or sell or both. A lot of times this kind of a situation will let you generate only buy signals for an algorithm, but somewhere down inside the chain, another module will generate the sell signals. This is important for advanced layering. It is not something that you will probably use a lot of, but it does have a place if you know what to do. Showing the chart. This is cosmetics strictly on the basis of whether or not you want to look at the signal line. Most of the time, as you get accustomed to the signal line, you will begin to realize its value and simplicity. But nonetheless, having the chart available is important. Okay, now we begin oops, with the part 
that will dictate how the whole process works. Confirmation bias. This determines if you want to use the confirmation side of the module as well as the primary side. Confirmation bias is on the basis of literally using two indicators, both of them the same, in this case MACD, to help filter and determine the best entry and exit points. Ticker symbol starts the primary part of the module. Everything from here all the way down to the confirmation point is the primary MACD indicator. This can be any symbol that TradingView supports. The analyzer provides this information if you want to compare this coin against another coin. You can compare it against another coin on the same exchange or even compare it against the same coin on a different exchange. Time frame. While you can pick time frames that exist up here, all of these time frames are available. This gives you the option of picking a time frame that doesn't exist in reality something that most traders would never use, like a 4-minute or a 13-minute or a 23-minute candlestick. TradingView does give you the option to change your chart to that, but what makes this stand out as significant is you can take each module and give it its own time frame and then they will interconnect and analyze data across different time frames. This is the meaning of a differential time frame analysis. Multiple time frame analysis is easy, but when you can take and apply four or five different time frames onto a single chart for purchasing, then you have a whole different variation. This is especially true when you can confirm a difference between, say, the one minute and the one hour, or the five minute and the 30 minute chart in the same module. Now, fast and slow sources. The fast line and the slow line can be individually tuned, and they can create some very interesting results. Any of your regular sources can be used for it, including some very complicated processes, such as something like this, that creates an unusual split channel circumstance. There are ways of making such things happen that go above and beyond the standard process and they are quite often very complex. Now we get to one of Jack Rabbit's most intriguing abilities. Your moving averages can be one of 30 different combinations. So the fast and slow line can actually have a complete different variation altogether and that creates multiple opportunities. For example, 30 and 30 is roughly 900 combinations. So now 930 is roughly 810,000 combinations based upon just these three entries. When you go in and count the other entry combinations, such as source and time frame, you are no longer limited to just a simple algorithm, but a very complete and complex situation.
fast, slow, and smoothing. These are the default settings for a traditional MACD, and they can be tuned and thus greatly enhance the capabilities of this module. Such avenues provide you with a wealth of capability moving beyond the standard MACD potential. Now, while a lot of MACDs are configurable and tunable, using these three in combination with all of the other elements gives you abilities beyond the traditional understanding of the market. Keep buy signal and keep sell signal. These specifically refer to the candles that the buy and the sell will be retained. On a single indicator process or a single module use, these really don't have a value. But if you're trying to get different modules to work together and they don't quite line up, then you can use this as a leading part of the process to help keep a signal long enough for a module that comes after this to connect up to it. It's an advanced process and does need to be used carefully. Invert signals. Well, this is an unusual process that literally changes the polarity of your buys and your sells. When this is set to yes, it will buy when it should sell and it will sell when it should buy. There is a very valid reason why this should be used for certain types of trading combinations. Now we get into the confirmation. The confirmation is everything identical to the primary, except it holds a completely separate indicator. Let's go ahead and just turn this on for now. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to do much changes with it. But you notice that it changed dramatically on the chart. Also notice that there are more lines. The brighter colors are the primary. The darker colors in this case are the confirmation. The confirmation can be very important when you're looking to filter out noise and they only apply appropriately when the signals between the primary and the confirmation line up. The confirmation cannot be used as an accumulation approach, as that is simply not the whole purpose of it. Confirmation is a filter. It will reduce the number of signals you have. So it is important that you keep that in mind when you're working and when you're looking at your variations. Now confirmations can use candlestick holdovers, meaning keeping your candlestick X number of times can cross over between the two different variations. So that can play a role between the confirmations when they may not line up directly upon themselves. Let's see what I can come up with and maybe I can come up with something that is profitable. I'm not necessarily going to guarantee that, but I am going to try to demonstrate some of the different possibilities. First, I want to turn off confirmation bias, simply because that can cause unwanted filtering at this point. So let's take a part of the chart, 
focus on it. I want to focus on buying here and selling up here. As you can see, I buy, then I sell. Let's see if I can filter out these cells and improve the profitability. So let's start with a common technique I use. Let's put this back to EMA. We'll leave this at SMA. Now let's increase the duration. I often find that changing these numbers helps out a lot. So let's put this to 37, this one to 73, and let's use a smoothing of 13. Now, as you can see, we've already had a dramatic change. We haven't gotten rid of this one yet, but we did filter out a lot more. Okay, let's take and see what we can combine here. Let's go to a sign weighted moving average. Now, the results are literally experimental. There's no one-stop shop all easy answer. That simply doesn't happen readily. And that is something that you do need to be aware of when you are working that a lot of times is just going to be trial and error. So we have a pretty good combination. We still need to work on filtering this signal out. That might be the role of a confirmation. Let's see. So we come down here. We turn on confirmation bias. And it's going to load the confirmation at default settings. And everything is gone now. So actually, let's take and zoom in. Let's get a better perspective of this particular situation. Now we see both lines. We see the primary moving averages. We see the confirmation moving averages. And we see both deltas. So let's see if we can tune the confirmation to be a little bit more cooperative with the primary. Well, let's put this at a low moving average and let's move these to a whole moving average. Again, it's trial and error. There are no exact guarantees that are going to work each and every time. It's just a matter of looking at the charts, trying to see how things line up. And let's take, just for the sake of seeing if this is a possibility, let's set this at a maximum that I feel comfortable with. Now, for the five minute candlestick, holding 10 candles means the primary is going to hold a signal for 50 minutes. Important to be aware of. But let's see if it helps line up. And it does. It lined up a buy signal over here. And it lined up a sell signal. And another buy signal. Now what's interesting is it avoided this entire process. That's very interesting and very telling. So by using confirmation, as you can see, it handles 
a filtration of a lot of unusual circumstances. In this case, when you look at the market, you see that it's actually picking up what would be considered a sideways channel with this particular setting. And sideways channels can often be the most profitable. While I am on the topic, though, of using the sideways channel approach, a confirmation bias is not always in your best favor. It's not something you should overuse. It has a place. It needs to be carefully looked at and tuned. It's not something that you just sprinkle all over for magic results. As you can see, it is very specific in what it does. It has a very specific understanding. Combined with other modules and advanced recipes or combinations can produce some very useful results, but combined inappropriately can cause losses. Most often, and in most cases, a confirmation is not necessary for simple strategies. And that is something that does need to be carefully considered. Now let's come up here and look at our time frame. Let's try a time frame of 17 minutes. This tells Jackrabbit's modulus framework to build an indicator that runs on a 17 minute candle. So from the standpoint of what Jackrabbit is capable of doing, it is capable of literally making a candlestick in a time frame that normally doesn't exist. Now you can do this through trading view by simply telling it that you want a custom time frame. And you will see what a 17 minute candlestick looks like. So now here is our 17 minute candlestick. Lo and behold, Jackrabbit is able to see the world in a whole different view. This is just one module using only the primary. You can do the same thing with the confirmation. It can look at its own separate time frame. That is a very significant advantage to you. As you can see, looking at this, it picks up a purchase here and it sells it here. It picks up a purchase here and it sells it here. So as you can see, looking at different time frames has a distinct advantage on your ability to pick more profitable situations. Now, even though your chart may not actually look at that kind of a situation, for example, let's go back to the five minute chart. You're looking at this in five minutes but the module is looking at it in 17 minute intervals. So what you see here may not necessarily make sense to you visually, but to the mathematics and the algorithm, it makes perfect sense. And by combining different modules using these techniques, you can actually build a paradigm capable of exceeding 
most market limitations where you can literally trap a buy signal down here and catch a sell signal up here but ignoring all the rest of it there are many different combinations more than I can actually tell you and more that can actually be calculated easily you could spend a lifetime testing every possible combination that this one single module can generate and right now I am simply using very simple combinations. Let's go, for example, I move this to an RMA. Now, if you're familiar with the way things work, RMA is the RSI moving average. So you now have Buy here, sell up here. In essence, you have turned your MACD into a compound MACD RSI. Simple changes with profound capabilities. But you will need to be aware that this type of a situation is an accumulation factor. So it will average the profit for the sell. Will it be profitable? That I don't know. Only a careful analysis will tell you that information. But there are things that you can do in terms of your tuning to maximize the benefits as much as possible. I have only just touched what is actually capable of being done in a very limited scope. There are a lot of different situations and combinations that you can create that go beyond anything I can even begin to predict. And that is something that only requires testing. And there are a lot of different things that I simply cannot predict. Simple changes have profound consequences. Simple changes can really affect the way the algorithm works. Test, repeat, use the analyzer, and take your time looking for opportunities. Don't necessarily stick to the market standards, because oftentimes the market standards won't give you good information. And that really is the crux of why Jackrabbit is built the way it is. Another tip when you're working a lot of people like to use the one hour candlestick or 60 minutes. If you want a slight edge use one minute before or one minute after the hour mark and it will produce results on a whole different level than what the one hour candlestick itself may show and represent. Don't be afraid to try combinations that haven't been thought of because there is no actual limitations to what this can achieve. So using a one hour candlestick it is able to make purchases on the one minute candlestick. That may not seem like it's possible, 
but mathematically it is, and it works very well. If you like this video, subscribe, give it a like, and share it with somebody who you think might be able to benefit from it. Until next time.